Hi everyone, my name's Steve Elliott. You may know me already from my main channel, which is all about digital painting. I've been running that for a couple of years and I've got about 350 videos on there all about digital painting. This channel, however, is all about painting traditionally. What I'm gonna do, I'm gonna take all my favorite paintings from my digital channel and I'm gonna reproduce them as oil paintings like this one, watercolors or pastels. So hopefully you, you'll join me on this journey. You'll subscribe and give me uh, lots of thumbs up to uh, help other people find the channel and uh, get me along the road. But I'm going to begin with this. Uh, as I say, it's a traditional oil painting taken from one of my uh, digital paintings. And let's get right into it. So here we are, I've started a painting and this is the digital version of that painting. I'll put a link to my uh, digital channel and this painting so you can go and check that out if you want. I painted that one first obviously and um, I, I the whole point of this channel is I'm going to be reproducing many of the paintings that I've done digitally, traditionally with oil paints, maybe watercolour, I don't know, we'll see how it goes. But this is the very first one. Uh, and I'm eager to get into it. So uh, I talk about the the filming first. I first time I filmed live, and I had a few issues with um, light balance and color correction and things. So I will get that sorted for the next video. I just wanted to get that out of the way first of all. Uh, I just forgot to change the settings when I uh, switched the camera on, and uh, we'll see a little bit of sort of color cast changes throughout so i hope it doesn't spoil it too much i'm beginning here with ultramarine blue and Payne's gray all these colors are dale rowney from the georgian range so they're not expensive paints and i'm using for this a one and a half inch decorators brush it's synthetic uh bristles not expensive i got it from costco i've got a set of them and um, I use using them to get the initial washes in. So I put in the uh, Payne's grey and blue first of all. I'm working on the dry ground and then add a little bit of white to that and start adding a few uh, wispy clouds in there. Um, I The board I'm using, again, it's a Dale Rowney board and it's supposed to have been primed three times. But when I uh, unwrapped it, it was it felt gritty. It just didn't look like it was um, primed properly. There was sort of dark areas on it. So I did give it another coat of gesso or gesso. I don't know how you really pronounce that before a start. So the color uh, that I'm putting in now is primary yellow and yellow green mixed together. And I'm sort of blending them in at the horizon just to add a bit of perspective as I'm going in there. And I'm still just using that uh, I've gone down to a, I may be using a one inch brush now, actually. I think um, I think I changed to a one inch brush after I'd done the sky. So now I'm using uh, just a flat brush, artist brush. And I'm using the Payne's Grey and Ultramarine Blue again to put in the this uh, distant line of trees. Sort of mixing the colours on the palette as I'm going. I'm going to want to soften them up a bit. The colour on this video actually looks a little bit yellow. It was it was actually a bit more green than that, to be honest. And um, I changed the... Um, original painting the digital version slightly i didn't work off the um painting i worked off a photograph which was quite a few feet away from me i couldn't see any detail in it or anything so uh, i just sort of um thought i'm not going to use that painting as a reference i want to see what i come up with uh, doing it in this different style because I do find when I'm painting digitally 
depending on what brushes I, I use, it affects the way I paint and the style I paint in. So I was sure that uh, using traditional paint uh, and using different brushes would affect the style. And indeed, the large brushes, the decorator's brushes, made a huge difference to if I was painting that with um, artist brushes. So I'm just sort of getting in all of the uh, basic information really at this point. Using a lot of ultramarine and Payne's Grey. I did put a little bit of burnt sienna on the palette as well. And uh, I probably just dipped into it from time to time, but not very much. It was mostly Payne's Grey and Ultramarine. I'm using a number two um, flat brush there. And then back to that decorator's brush, just to sort of blend it all down and soften it off a little bit. And then add a little bit more color. I found that, that I, I really like that effect with the uh, decorator's brush and um i was i was a bit miffed because i've spent quite a bit of money on uh, i have to say painting in traditional is uh, with traditional mediums and stuff is not cheap when i decided to do this i went out and set up and got an easel and you know canvases a couple of canvases and some paints and stuff and i've spent more than if i'd have bought an ipad uh, so obviously I use a, an iPad Pro to do a lot of work, but I could have bought a brand new iPad for less than what I've spent on paints and stuff just to get me set up to do this. But anyway, what I was going to say was uh, I was I was pleased because I was I was loving the effect I'm getting with that um, decorator's brush, but I was kind of bit because I spent quite a lot of money on artist quality brushes. Uh, proper uh, artist oil brushes and um, I, I was using the just the number two and all of the other brushes uh, all the other, most of the work was done with this decorator's brush which cost me about a pound or something like that so um, yeah I'm not I'm not going to worry too much about spending a lot of money on brushes so it's been a long long while since i did any oil painting uh, traditionally i've been uh, a watercolor artist and i've done uh, lots of exhibitions and painted loads and loads and loads of watercolor paintings uh, but i've only done a few oil paintings so this is kind of taking that there's the the techniques and skill that i learned digitally and then um using those or transferring those core skills back into the traditional painting with the oil painting. And I'm amazed at how much you can uh, transfer. The only thing you can't transfer is that undo button uh, when you paint it digitally, where you can you make a mistake and you can just click undo and then put a stroke in again. Uh, I, I did discover that it, it's, it can be quite um, frustrating when you've got your sky exactly how you want it, and then you put a brush stroke in, and oh no, it's not where it needs to be. So you've then got to rework the sky um, to get rid of the brush stroke that you've done. And if you haven't got any more paint mixed up, if you haven't got enough paint mixed up, that makes it even more difficult. But he wasn't. That didn't happen too many times, to be honest. I think it only happened maybe twice. Um, and uh, I have to say, I've got a massive... This is the second oil painting I've done in my new studio. And I'm getting a massive buzz through uh, painting with oils. I still get a buzz from painting digitally. But I, I put the two side by side. And I have to say, I am liking the oil ones. Uh, um, a lot what I'm doing now uh, sorry that I've got my uh, palette in the way I was just adding a little bit of sky in between the um, oh that is very annoying all you can see is a fistful of brushes uh, that's something I'm going to have to work on yeah I was just saying I was putting a little bit of sky detail 
back through the branches of the, that uh, bush on the left hand side and now what I'm doing is adding a few highlights onto the tree uh, of the leaves just to sort of make that pop a little bit that's the, the actual photo um, it was the tree was just in silhouette but I, I felt that I needed to put a few sparkly little highlights on the tree uh, especially where the sky is really dark because then I'm getting this sort of um, counter change or counterbalance between light and dark where I've got uh, one against the other So I'm sort of reworking into that, that tree now and I'm using the number two brush, which is very much unlike me because usually I do like to work with a bigger brush as I can get away with. But at this point, it just felt right that uh, the number two brush just seemed perfect for doing those uh, very small leaves and those highlights. There we go, I'm putting some uh, darker ones in as well. Notice I'm putting the dark against the light sky and the light uh, leaves against the darker sky. Except for there. <laughs> this tree is kind of organic and it keeps growing. I keep adding to it as the painting develops. I've also got a, a bit of light reflecting off that. So I'm sorry about that as well. I will resolve that for the next painting. I wanted uh, a nice dark foreground. So it sort of adds a uh, perspective to the painting where it really makes that feel that that's right in front of you. And then the, um, it should just sort of fades away to the, to the uh, back. Yeah, that light is annoying me quite a bit. So um, I did th things that uh, struck me when I was painting this was I um, shake quite considerably and I don't know if it was nerves because I haven't painted with traditional paint for such a long time. Or I'm so used to drawing with um, a stylus instead of a paintbrush that I was finding it difficult to just get the brush exactly in the right place where I wanted and uh, what I do to resolve that, you'll see that in a while, is I use a mull stick because I used to be um, a sign writer. Well, I was a painter and decorator, actually, but I did do some sign work as, that, as a decorator. So I've used a mull stick quite a lot. So um, I bought myself a new mall stick. I've never actually owned a real mall stick before. I've only ever made them myself out of a bit of dowel and a bit of rag tied to the end of it but I uh, treated myself and bought a new one and you'll see me getting that out in a little bit and that makes a massive difference to being able to um, work on that fine detail because I like to paint standing up I'm not into sitting down so uh, and the other thing was obviously I, I couldn't get close up to the painting because I'd be obscuring the view from the camera and you won't be able to see what I was doing. So I had to kind of keep at arm's length. So that kind of frustrated me somewhat with the detail, but the mole stick does uh, sort that problem out in a little bit. I just keep working over the old painting, really. I'm just sort of looking at it and thinking... Uh, is, does that look far enough away? Is it further enough in the distance? Do I need to add something to it? Shall I put a little bit of detail in that foreground? You see I'm having a, a few twigs in there, just sort of flicking them in. What I'm doing now, in actual fact, is uh, a bit of a waste of time because I do wipe that all out eventually. Um, you don't see that though because I stopped recording, but I do just repaint that little bit. Back into the tree again. So I'm, I do fl fl flick a, flit about. I'm all over the place. I'll be working on one area. Then I'll go somewhere else. And I'm just the same when I'm painting digitally. I tend to start off very loose uh, and then work down. So they're just blocking in shapes and then uh, add a bit more detail and a bit more detail as I'm going. And when I say detail, I don't mean 
massive amount of detail because I'm not a detail type person. I'm much more into um, impressionism and sort of very loose looking pieces. So this took me about, I don't know, maybe four hours start to finish fiddling about and having lunch in the middle and so on. Adding some highlights now, I felt that I needed to put some uh, of the sky back in. When I say highlights, I'm putting light in between the branches on the tree. I don't know if you can see that. Just taking that colour and sort of dabbing other areas with it as well. Here we go. Here's with the mole stick. I used it, first of all, to sign it. And then sort of stood back and looked at it and thought, it ain't finished. It's nowhere near finished. And and as soon as I used the mole stick to sign it, I thought, right, I can now get in with the detail. You can see straight away I'm starting to um, pop bits of detail in. So I was kind of quite happy with the painting at that point, but the finished piece changes quite a lot because... I kept working it and working it and um, sort of doing bits. And then I went really crazy, didn't like it, wiped bits out and sort of softened bits off. And um, it changed quite a lot. You see there, I've extended that diagonal foreground. I've got an old decorator's brush there. I think it's called a badger. And I'm just softening off the sky a little bit because I felt that I wanted to make the clouds a little bit more defined. Soften them off first, then um, add a little bit more white. I think I'm mixing up the white now. Yeah, there we go. So that's that's going in. And then I will soften that off as well. That's pretty much how I did the digital version. Don't forget to go over and have a look at that if you're um, interested in how I did the digital painting. Softening that off again. I've had that brush a few years. I've probably, that brush has got to be 40 years old, perhaps. Oh, God. A long time. A long, long time. So that sky also leads you to the tree as well, the sort of lines of it. So when I signed it, I was nowhere near finished, to be honest. it's uh, I did a lot more work, softening it off again. I do like to leave brush strokes in there, and I don't want it to be all uh, nice and uh, perfect. I, I want it to look like paint. If you know what I mean. I don't want it to be um, absolutely photographic or anything. I want it to be an impression. And I want it to look like a really stormy cloud. Yeah, I'm liking that. I think that works a lot better. Again, just softening it off just a little bit. I guess I'm mixing up paint again. Just because I'd softened that edge, uh, I needed to just put some sharp um, leaves back in there on the tree because I'd smudged them a little bit just to uh, make that pop again. There we go. So this this tree, it is growing. Look, there's, um, as each hour passes, it grows a couple more inches as I add a few more leaves on there. Yeah, so as I said earlier, I like to stand up when I'm painting. Uh, even when, when I'm uh, working digitally, usually I sit down, but I've now got a desk where I can stand if I want. And uh, I've always liked to stand up because you can just stand back and look at your work and sort of 
you know, you're not going to jump out your chair and everything and sort of move away. It's just really easy. I thought it'd be cool to add a few leaves. Um, and there you can see I've changed the um, edge on the left-hand side quite a bit. I've added, uh, well, I've, I scraped it all off and then I put it in with a, a, a big brush and uh, just sort of made it a little bit more abstract. I just thought it was getting really fussy and really detailed. And also, if you look at the tree, I used some Payne's Grey mixed with a little bit of Ultramarine, and I used a palette knife just to add a few more darker shadows, and then I scratched in um, one of the branch, one or two of the branches. And I didn't record that. I, I didn't intend to do anything, but I just or not much. I was just going to touch it and then I kind of got carried away. So I'm, I'm sorry about that. I will uh, try not to do that again and make sure you see the all of the painting. But as I say on my digital channel, I hope you have enjoyed this video. If you have, big thumbs up. As always, is much appreciated. And you will be new to the channel because it's brand new. I would really, really appreciate it if you subscribed and help me uh, get this channel up and running. It would mean a lot to me. So hopefully I'll see you all in the next one. Bye.